Hey guys, it's Ripper here again. Hope you're doing well. Just another video, a great gameplay I'm bringing today with the Des Moines. The build is on the screen right there. More of a uh, good gun reloading uh, Des Moines kind of style build, as well as the commander build right there. It's mostly focusing on concealment and AA and just rate of fire. So I just want to bring this great uh, game footage for you today. And guys, if you guys like it, uh, love to support the channel with us, so go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button to help us out. We love to try to get to at least 100 subscribers just starting out here. And uh, we love to appreciate those that have already supported us. And uh, we're going to have a great game. So uh, we like to go, or I like to go, on the west side of A and just see if I can somehow get some broadside or uh, flanking maneuvers here in the, uh, the first case possible. And obviously, we run into the Buffalo. Uh, the Buffalo's an okay cruiser. Just, man, look at that Citadel right there. Just, just not really good armor wise. It's just a kind of a light cruiser in my mind. The Des Moines handled it, handles it very well. Uh, I load AP right off the bat and just begin shooting and getting a good crossfire right away because I'm using this island on my left here as sort of cover to protect my left broadside in case uh, we have a DD or maybe another cruiser or battleship that could broadside us. So the key of the game is really to protect your sides and really just attack one ship at a time. And that would be ideal in most cases, but you gotta try to get that first as a you know, winning strategy. So Buffalo is slowing down a little bit, you know, fire a couple APs, aim just to get a Citadel again, and boom, almost there, a little overpin action, but the rate of fire on the Des Moines is amazing. And there's a Citadel right there, 12,000 knocked off him, and he is hurting, he is running away. And uh, look at the rate of fire there, I mean, just constant, like every four and a half seconds you have, you know, six shells off the front, they're just constantly going into the ship. And the AP, as you can tell, it does really, you know, significant damage, uh, if you really get a good broadside in. Uh, or just continuously putting on the heat, putting fire, putting uh, shells down range. It uh, really does scare off a lot of you know, ships, especially DDs. And the radar on this ship is uh, great. I mean, American ships, great. They have radar. Uh, this one is out to 10K, 10 kilometers. And it lasts for, and I had the mod upgrade on it. You can really get this thing up to 42 seconds. So I like the Des Moines, I like the Puerto Rico. A uh, really fun ship to play with, especially the Alaska. Uh, you know, not available anymore, but it was a, it's a great ship. I mean, the cruiser lines, the American lines, I think are really great. They're fun, they're a well-rounded cruiser. And you can see just by the gameplay how flexible it allows your, your team to use you as an asset because not only are you a great, um, you know, in ISR platform, and, uh, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance with the hydro and the radar, uh, but you also provide a, a significant threat with the amount of firepower that you do bring to the table. So, what we're doing right now is supporting the Richelieu and Lepanto. So we see that you know there are no other ships in the area, and it looks like the majority of the team is trying to press D. Now, you can bum rush or whatever you want to call land rush or just overwhelm one side. Only problem is you run the risk of yourself being engulfed or flanked uh, because the whole our whole team could just basically encircle you. And getting encircled in this kind of type of warfare uh, doesn't really allow you, especially with the age of broadsiding, really, you know, heavy hitting ships, sap shells, HE spams, it's really difficult to fight a battle on two fronts. Uh, so really, you really want to have to protect your flanks as best you can. So we elect a cap A, that's an easy cap, and we're going to push up and we're going to find that there's a Soyuz here uh, hiding behind an island. Now, good for him that he's using the island, bad that he's not really, sh he's got nobody spotting for him and he doesn't know what's coming on his, his right flank. So knowing this, you know, we elect to push and see if we can get it around him. So I'm thinking, well, his attention is focused to the south. He's looking at our other main fleet and maybe whoever's coming out of A, but I think he may have not thought about us coming from the rear. So what my, you know, as anyone would do is just try to see if I could flank. So I send the radar out to see, give us some good intelligence here. Well, where are they? I mean, the best, you know, intelligence and information you can have on the battlefield is enemy position. So we're going to aim at the, the stern of a ship. And you can see, uh, I've been watching a lot of videos. I see a lot of the, you know, really good guys like flying, flying bass. They always aim at the rear of the ship or at the front of the bow, basically where the armor is the weakest on most particular battleships. You know, and usually it's around 30, 32 millimeters and it is no problem with the, um, the Des Moines. Now, if you notice, if I start aiming towards the middle of the ship, the, the Soviet ship here, you see the shells on the right screen that are non-penetrating. You see that that is where the thick armor is. And I started going, man, they're not just not getting anything done. So I have to shoot maybe further towards the rear here. And you're getting some of those nice juicy pins right there. 
And you can see now that I'm getting a little closer, the, the pen angles are working better for my in my favor, so we can get a little bit more damage from yeah, far away. That armor is just strong. Soviet ships, man, they are just tanks. Okay, so the Buffalo's running away now. We like to switch to HE and see if we can get him out of the game here. Let's just see if we can just start spamming HE on him. And all right, Lepanto got him with the sap shell. You just see those red shells leaving. It's pretty powerful, Lepanto the ship. The shells are amazing. Just the dispersion and the, the spread of the shells is just pretty poor on the Italian side. But not us, the Des Moines. We are very accurate. Uh, we're a cruiser-like dispersion. We got really good... Uh, shells and AP, uh, especially the AP. I love the AP on the American ships. Really good plunging fire. All right, the Soyuz is obviously guns not aimed at us. So let's just take this opportunity to get all of our guns to bear, show more of our broadside while keeping our nose pointed, as you can see in the front there, to a Vermont. And we don't want to mess with him. He's got some of the biggest guns in the game. And you don't want all 12 of his 457 millimeter guns aimed at us. So let's keep the nose pointed at the Vermont, but keep looking at the Soyuz here. Because he's not looking at us. None of his guns are looking at us. I think he eventually swings his rear turret there. There you go. He's looking at us now. So we're like, uh-oh. Uh, hopefully he doesn't get a good lucky shot. We just start aiming at the, uh, the superstructure area. That's where the most damage we're going to get out of our HE shells. He fires one at us. Boom. Took some a little bit off. Not too bad. And look at the A on this. So the Lexington can't stand a chance. They can turn it on defensive A fire and just eliminate all seven. Wipe out an entire squadron of planes. And we're already at 104,000 damage, guys. So uh, th this was an intense game. And just, man, you are on the edge of your seat figuring out where do we go at this point? What are we going to do now? So we got to keep our eye on the Vermont. He has 12 guns, uh, big guns aimed at us. Like, here, here. Ooh, wow. One shell. That was one shell took 8,000 damage off us. So imagine if all 15 hit us, uh, or I'm sorry, all 12 hit us. So it's pretty ridiculous firepower he's got right there. Crews are on normal alert. So as we're going along, we're trying to basically find out what, what what side are we gonna take right here because we have a Vermont on our left, and but we have the rest of the team on our right. So we have to keep all players in mind as to where we're gonna go with this. And I'm looking at my team and like, man, half of my team is dead. So I'm going, wow, we don't have enough firepower to take on. We might have to play defensive at this point. You know, try to cap A so we get the points. We gotta force them out by points because they're up by what, 200 something right now? So let's get this cap row going, and I'm thinking, okay, we may have some ships coming between that gap right there that I'm staring at, and we have the Vermont, which I don't know if he's going to turn back around or is he going to continue sailing away, running from us. So, well, let me think about this for a second. Like, again, that strategy of putting a, ma a piece of landmass on one of our sides to protect our broadside, it came to my mind. So I'm thinking, okay, let me push up to this mountain after I cap, and let's use that as a staging point for me to broadside any ships that come in our way, because I'll have the advantage. So the Richelieu is going to go forward here, and I think he's trying to take on the Vermont by himself, so we'll let him do that. He's on fire. Man, look at those shells. Man, that is de a deadly shot right there. You don't want to deal with the Vermont. So I'm going to cap this area, and we're going to push, push forward. They only have one DD. Now, I don't know where that DD is at right now. So, oh, actually, he just popped up. So he is on the southeast side of the map. And the Nevsky and uh, the Yoshino maybe will hold them off the best they can. So we elect to, uh, oh, actually, this, the DD is actually in that smoke right now. Okay, now we can get rid of their DD. That would be a crucial play in this game right now. So he's, I'm waiting for him to ring. I look at, I put my crosshairs on it and figure out what the range is. It's in 10. Okay, pop the radar. And I got a clear shot to freeze on, especially everybody else. Now everybody else can see him, and we just start unloading hell on him. Just keep firing. Let's get the freeze on out of the game firing nine shells of HE from uh, our turrets here. And boom, one last shot. Let's see if we get him. Boom, crucial play right. We knock him out on, oh, look at this. We have a Yoshino broadside to us. Immediately switch to AP, start aiming for the bow of the ship. And you see that right there, Citadel, two Citadels, 16,000 damage. Now, for some reason, I shot there. I got a, a nice juicy, uh, you know, bow in shot but man he started that just slight little turn right there you notice it's like really deflecting a lot of our shells there i get one lucky shot to take out his guns and I mean, come on that's one more shot where can i aim i was trying to think in superstructure right there is what gets us the winning kill second kill of the game we have a john bart on the left of us right now oh man we gotta get this lexington hopefully he doesn't shoot anything all right we're good Okay, the John Bar, he's a good balance ship, so we're not gonna you know, press him. He, he's got a good advantage on us, and all of a sudden, I think that's a Minotaur shooting at us. Now, his shells aren't broadsiding me or anything, but man, 
You notice this is annoying. This, you have constant, what, 1,500, 500 damage You're being plucked off of us. This is kind of annoying. Taking out one of our guns, uh, we cannot afford this. So we elect to reverse and, and you just get away from this uh, fire. We cannot take you know fire from multiple sides here. So the Zhao's coming in. Let's go. Oh, wow, nice shot on the Zhao. We got to get him out of the game so we can level the playing field here. So I, just, I wish I had that other gun. And somebody else takes him right there. The Lepanto, great shot right there. Now the Amagi's coming back in. And we start reversing, getting out of this Minotaur, but man, we are constantly being spotted by something, by the planes, and we just need to get out of the way. Um, oh, the Abomari's coming in. We are in perfect broadside area now. We just continuously elect the shooter. Now, I gotta expose myself, but man, look at that. Citadel for 14.4 damage. Just keep raining on the fire, and he is just giving so much juicy broadside right there. We gotta keep firing, and just get him out of the game as fast as we can, and level the playing field. And that is kill number three. And oh my goodness, what is this? Jean Bart right in front of us. Let's get a nice juicy broadside right in front. Aim for the bow. You get about 8,000 or 3,000 damage and is finished off by the Richelieu. Now we are actually up a ship now. Now we can get this Amagi out of the game. This would really give us a clear advantage, but we just lost our Richelieu to Lexicon Torps. A good Torps by him. And uh, I didn't, I, this is a tier eight ship now, Amagi. And I'm thinking, okay, I can take on you know a tier eight. Uh, no big deal, so I just fire as much as I can. I'm showing a little too much broadside than I'm comfortable with, but this might be the winning shot right here, and he got us right there. And just a great shot. Uh, get Confederate, the Imagi, see, we put as much shells in the Imagi as we can, and now we're just relying on the rest of our last two ships to win. Uh, so this is a nail biter, guys. This is a real bit a nail biter, and they got a carrier as well. So the Imagi is on fire, and I believe. Our team is shooting, wow, from across the map. Uh, you know, good shooting right there. I, hope, I think it's Yoshino. Yoshino's a pretty good ship, actually. I've gone up a couple of them, and we, obviously we shot one a minute ago. And man, that Yoshino is really powerful, He's even from long range. So I might look at uh, potentially getting that ship. You know, you just got to get a, more, a couple more ar uh, coal in, in the armory, and uh, you could potentially buy uh, the Yoshino. So we may think about that. All right, we have two versus two now. We are we just turned the tide of the game now. Two hundred and six thousand damage, three kills. We put the team back in the lead with points now, and now it's all up to the Yoshino to win the game for us. Um, the uh, Nevsky uh, did a great job, but now I think he's more out of the game to the west now. I don't think it can really be um, a substantial player at this point. Uh, just not able to put any guns to bear. I don't think the range on the Nevsky is as long as the Yoshino. So the Shino is uh, electing to push, and oh man, the Minotaur, that dreadful Minotaur that was shooting and bothering us earlier, has come back into the picture now, trying to cap C, to see if he can level the, pl the, uh, the point score here. And uh, the Minotaur is a deadly ship. I mean, it's only AP shells, but man, I mean, you have five turrets shooting constantly at a high rate of fire, as well as torpedoes. So the Mino is gonna tuck behind this island and go off of uh, detection. We don't have a carrier anymore, so we don't have any kind of eyes to figure out where he's at. They do. They have a Lexington constantly spotting. Yoshino pops Hydro to see if any torpedoes or anything are coming at him. Mino also reveals himself by shooting at the uh, scout plane. Our victory Mino is going to actually go Let's bow in. He's going to attack head on, which he's got a Yoshino literally uh, broadside. So, man, scary player right here. Uh, who's going to win? Who is going to win in this gun battle? Well, the Yoshino, which has pretty solid guns. Look at that. One shot on the bow and still took about a quarter of his damage away. And now he's getting some supporting fire from Nevsky, who, by the way, is only at about a thousand something health. So I can understand why you're running away. Just trying to stay alive as best you can. Good job on the Nevsky, doing the best you can. And boom! Knockout blow from the Yoshino, even head on. Those guns can penetrate that armor. Uh, yeah, the, the, cru the Mino Cruiser nowadays, um, it used to be really strong, but man, you catch that thing, you fire a couple AP rounds in it, it it's like paper. So, good guns, but yeah, not as uh, armored as you would like. Uh, Yoshino, pretty good armor. Look at that low, low structure, uh, low um, you know, bow and uh, area, surface area of Yoshino. It, it, I mean, it's pretty tucked in there in the water, so I can see why people like this ship a lot. So. Now, uh, we really just have to win the game. So three caps, 885 points. You only got about three minutes left. Uh, the Lexington really is at a disadvantage here. 
Uh, the Mino is just going to take him out with the planes. There's no way the Lexington can really can uh, take on the AF and Nevsky here. I mean, just just look at the sheer firepower. I mean, and I love the new artwork, by the way. The art, look at this. The guns are firing. They're moving. They're training. The, the, the shells. The planes crashing from the sky. The parachutes that may come out. I mean, they, they did a great work on the artwork of uh, World Warships now. I mean, I really like it. Now, I would really love it if they could add, you know, you could see the actual personnel. I think a couple of other games, like War Thunder or some other Pacific ga battleship games, you actually see the crew uh, manning the guns and everything. I would love to see something like that or just something, you know, I mean, obviously it'd be a high demand on the computer systems, but man, if another game can do it, this would be totally awesome to have that. And uh, yeah, it's just, we're just trying to you know, make it even more realistic uh, every uh, every single year. And technology has come a long way. I mean, I remember this game when it first came out, it looked really, really arcadey. Uh, but now, wow, it, it is almost lifelike. It, I would say it's pretty realistic. Um, but if they can just keep adding more every year, there just be more and more uh, perfection added on to perfection. So yeah, Lexington is uh, just trying to do anything it can against this Yoshino. I mean, you can just see the, the Tier 8 crew, or carrier line. I don't think as a match for a tier nine or tier ten um, cruiser uh, here. So uh, there goes the game. So we won this game. We come out on top. If you guys like the video, please like and subscribe and support us. Trying to get to 100 subscribers. That'd be awesome. And uh, yeah, we uh, we did our part in this game. 200,000 plus damage, three kills, Des Moines, and we held and we came back from a deficit. And uh, here we are. So hope you guys enjoyed the game. Until next time, we'll see you. Cheers.